On this episode of Missouri Life, we're dropping in on the Lake of the Ozarks. I'm Meredith Haynes. Thanks for joining us on another exploration of Missouri life. Conveniently located in the heart of Missouri, the Lake of the Ozarks is the premier lake resort destination. Here you'll find an abundance of activities, flavors, sites, and places to stay. For nearly a century, the lake has been luring in millions of visitors every year from all walks of life to experience what this man-made wonder has to offer. Now, we visited this Missouri staple last season, but there's so much to experience, we had to come back for a second trip. The first stop on our visit to the lake was hardly a stop at all. As soon as we arrived, I found myself gearing up for yet another high-octane thrill ride through the Ozarks, traveling at blistering speeds, much like the power boats at Performance Boat Center from season five. Only this time, we were burning rubber in race cars. The Ozarks International Raceway is a 3.97 mile state-of-the-art racing facility at the heart of the Ozarks. J.R. Pesek showed us around this massive complex and gave us a glimpse into the future of Missouri racing. J.R. Pesek, we are here at the Ozarks International Raceway in Gravoy Mill, Missouri. This is something that you have been working on for several years and you're getting ready to open it up to the public. How's that feeling? feels good to get it done. We're, we're, we're proud of, of what we've accomplished here. Um, we think we've built one of the most challenging pro tracks in the country. Um, now we're very interested in getting the pro teams here and to get their opinion of the track, which we've already started. And uh, so far it's been uh, very good on what the replies that we've heard and uh, people like what they see. So hopefully we'll continue to get those as we do our more testing and bring more teams here to the track. Was this a lifelong dream of no. yours? No. No, no, it's just something that I, we, 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 we drove around the country racing uh, for the last several years with IMSA and SRO. And we always want to know why we're not racing in the Midwest. We drove through Missouri back and forth and there's nothing here. So we, we looked around for a while, uh, a couple of different locations, one in Iowa and a couple of different locations around here to try to build a racetrack, to try to bring something here. And I think one of the important parts that we, that we did here is to bring base racing back to the Midwest. There, there's no road, pro road courses around us. Our closest ones are probably eight to nine, 10 hours away. So we try to bring that back to the Midwest and we think we've accomplished it here. So you're familiar with Missouri's landscape. Yes. You, you looked at a lot of different places. Was there something about the Ozarks that you knew this would be a prime location for what you were going for? Well, it, it, in racing, we raced a couple of intercontinental series and, and we always seem to be going back to certain places the same or repeatedly over and over. And the intercontinental races, they bring people in from other countries and it, they always want to have those races at places that have destinations. So they bring people over, they want to be here for 10 or 14 days, they want to be at a destination. And, and right here in the Ozarks, it, it, we have it. We're 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes away from about everything you want to do here, from golf to go-karting, to outlet malls, to restaurants, to food. I mean, it has it all, and then we have the water. And, and I think that's a big draw to people here. I think it's already a destination location. We didn't have to create anything. We just had to build a great racetrack. I wanted to build something that has a little bit of all the rest of the tracks in the country that we go, go to to race. So how do we create all that in one location? We wanted to make sure that whatever we built had a little bit of everything. That's part of being a race car driver. What you look at is you look at the challenge and you look at the, the technicality of a track and the speed and try to combine that all in one. I think that we've done that here. Um, we have 1,265 feet of elevation change in one lap. The track is 3.97 miles long, and it'll be 3.97 miles of working your car from left to right and right back over the hills and crests. There's seven blind corners and crests, and we think that adds a lot of the excitement to the track. But we hope that we've built a pro track and that it becomes a destination for race car enthusiasts to come. And not just of the pro series, but we think the amateur series and the people that want to 
look into purchasing or just for an experience that we feel that we can bring you here and give you that little knowledge of what racing and road racing really is in the United States. I think road racing is challenging. It's, it's not just left-hand turns at high speeds. It's left-hand turns, it's right-hand turns, it's braking joints. It's, it's being able to push your machine and the driver skills to, to the limits to try to, to do that. And it pushes each athlete, which is what race car drivers are, their athletes, to be the best that they can do. And, and that's something that we really tried to push to the limit here. And, and I think that we've done it. My road grader was my pencil and my bulldozer is my eraser. And we've done a lot of erasing and, and fixing stuff and making it better. We've taken input from professional race car drivers. We've taken professional uh, series and we've, we've tried to build everything that you can. I mean, the last track hasn't been built in 35 years other than Coda down in Austin, Texas. So how do we build what everybody wants into one track? You know, one of, some of the biggest things that we hear from the older racers are don't build decreasing radius corners. Make corners wide so you can race. You know, we want side-by-side -side racing and we want to make it interesting. You know, make it so the corners flow into each other and it's not just consistently, you know, left, 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 right, right, right. So, and I think we've done that here, and especially with the elevations. Uh, in a five-year program, we someday want to put some cabins on here. We want to put some team housing out here. Uh, we want to bring, open up the outside of the racetrack more. We plan on putting a one-mile off-road track in here. We plan on putting a three, uh, two point three mile um, off road track through the uh, trees for like motorcycles and side by sides here. So we, we have a lot that we want to do here. We're sitting on six hundred and fifty four acres, um, and we plan on using every bit of it for motorsports. Jr., thank you so much for for giving us the little tour. Can we actually go for a ride? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Located on the iconic stretch of roadway near Bagnell Dam called The Strip, you'll find plenty of restaurants to choose from, but there's only one that stands out for a gourmet breakfast. Serving up signature dishes and warm family atmosphere, Stewart's Restaurant has been a staple of the Lake of the Ozarks for well over 50 years. Flavor Guide Will made a stop to indulge in the hearty recipes that have brought lake goers back for generations. I am here with Steve Beck, owner of Stewart's Restaurants. Steve, how you doing this morning? Great. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. I, I first have to ask you, do you agree that uh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Well, sure, we have to. That's why we serve it till 2 o'clock every day. In a nutshell, tell me about what Stewart's Restaurants is. Uh, Stewart's is a very iconic restaurant that's been here since 1953 on Bagnell Dam Strip. And uh, the Stewart's family, Mr. and Mrs. Stewart, lived downstairs and ran the operation for uh, close to 40 years before their niece took over. And then we bought it in 2003. It's been a part of the history of Lake of the Ozarks since the 1950s. So. Well, uh, you're going to have some of your uh, other managers come out and, and show off some of those uh, meals. Yes. So I appreciate you sitting and talking with me, yeah. and I'm excited for some breakfast. Right. It is the most important meal of the day, especially for me. That and a cup of coffee. Great. <laughs> this thing is absolutely huge. I don't think I've ever seen a cinnamon roll this big. It's been it's been at Stewart's for as long as I can remember. So I mean, it's been around. I mean, people coming here that are. You know, senior citizens, and they're still, you know, they were, had them when they were kids, and they still come back to have them now, so. Well, I guess I should dig in here and give it a shot. The best part's going to be the center of it, but if you slice it like a pie, that way everybody gets a little bit of everything. Yeah, I don't know. I'd feel bad if I just cut right into it. Holy moly. All right. I just have to try a bit of it. Here we go. I'm going to need a napkin for sure. <laughs> oh, look at that. They get it warm enough. Oh yeah, good deal. That's really delicious. I'm not usually a fan of pastries or sweets or anything, but I could probably eat this whole thing. Could you really? Okay, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll I sit back and watch you. I'm... I gotta save room for the other one. Yeah, more. Yeah, you got more coming. Yeah. So Richard, you're uh, the GM at this location yeah. here at Lake Ozark. Yeah. What's your favorite part about this location and being at Lake of the Ozark? Being busy. The day goes by quick. So. Yeah. What do we have here? This is amazing. Is this gravy on an omelet? Yes, sir. So this is one of our signature dishes. This is our farmer's omelet. It's our three fluffy eggs stuffed full of hash browns, sausage, green peppers, and onions. Topped off with our homemade sausage gravy every morning. Served with a side of toast. As far as omelets, that, that's hard to beat right there. 
If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right, right? Oh, man. Ooh. That's fantastic. Yeah, stuff. it's it's really good. That's really good. I love I love omelets, but with gravy on it, it kind of gives it a different twist. It really does, yeah. but it works. It absolutely works. So you are the GM of the Camdenton location. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what what do you love about uh, about doing this? Uh, it's just it's a fun place to work for. Great family environment. It's you know it's fun to get up, be excited, go to work every day. And your favorite dish? Probably a toss-up between the farmer's omelet and the pork tenderloin. Ooh, pork tenderloin. Is that what's coming up next? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Might need a bigger table. <laughs> Maybe. And a bigger stomach. Right? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's huge. Hello. Hi. I'm Will. I'm Keith. Keith. Nice to meet you, Will. What deliciousness have you brought me today? We have a full breaded Ooh. tenderloin. Well, tell me about it. How do you guys make it? Um, it's a seven ounce loin that we hand batter. We actually also do cut a full size loin down and um, tenderize the meat. Um, hash browns, of course. There's hash browns underneath there. Oh, absolutely. It's a lot to fit on the plate. It covers a lot. This is how you're supposed to eat breakfast. If, I mean. It's been a staple down here for years. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. Steaming. Very good. Yes. Oh man. That, I believe, is a quintessential hearty breakfast. It is. It'll fill you up for the day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so your location is, a, you, you fill multiple roles around here. I do. Uh, I check in on uh, all locations, kind of the district manager. Um, I do run Greenview right now, and we just opened one on the water down at Red Oak Resort, so I'm kind of overseeing that too. Awesome. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite part about Stewart? It's either your favorite part or your favorite dish. What do you love about this place? Um, really, it's the people we work with. I mean, I've never worked with crews like this before in my life. I've been in the industry a long time, so it's been, it's a good group of people. I wouldn't go anywhere else. That sounds awesome. And for those of you who are looking for a good breakfast place, you can come to Stewart's for some amazing flavors in the food and some awesome people as well. And thank you so much for bringing this Absolutely. out to me. And I might actually finish this? finish this one. <laughs> yeah, you can share it with the crew. Yeah, they'll, they'll help us out. So <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks, Will. Yeah. It's good talking to you. You too. You don't have to travel very far from Stewart's for dessert or a special treat. Just a minute or two walk down the strip is Grandma's Candy Kitchen. This colorful shop is nearly impossible to miss. Just look for the giant fudge written across the roof. We caught up with Grandma Jenny White in between batches of chocolate turtles to indulge our sweet tooth and try some samples. The store's been here for better than 50 years. I believe it was started in 1960. Well, I've worked for 34 years and I came up and worked with the original grandma, which was Grandma Bernice, and she taught all of us how to make candy. I like to cook, and it's a good thing because <laughs> we do a lot of cooking, but Bernice came with the store, and she taught us a lot. She was quite a lady. The things that we make are all of our fudge and almost all of these chocolates that you see, the turtles, the dark chocolate, the pecan nest and bear claws. We set those up on the counter on the weekends and they just buy us out, you know. They see those and they want them. Taffy is extremely popular. And fresh dipped strawberries in the summer. I like to see people's reactions. And we have repeat customers that come every year. We have people that call us at Christmas time that order every year. They wouldn't have it any other way if they didn't have our fudge or our chocolates or taffy. It's fun to watch the kids in here. They're, they're a blast. They get so excited. You know, if you can remember when you were a kid and how excited you got getting a lollipop. My name's Kristen. Uh, my grandma is actually Grandma Jenny, and we work together making a lot of the chocolates and the fudge. People get so excited when they come in here. They uh, almost get overwhelmed at all of the options that we have to offer, and they some people spend 30 minutes to an hour just looking at things before they decide, <laughs> so. Um, I'm not planning on being the next grandma of Grandma's Candy Kitchen. I'm actually in school right now, so I'm probably gonna venture off eventually, but I do have a daughter and I'm hoping that maybe this place will still be around and maybe she can come work here one day, so. Enjoying life on the water doesn't always require a boat. Super Dave's Paddlecraft Adventures has plenty of options for taking in the beautiful weather on the water at your own pace. 
After lunch on the beach at Frankie and Louie's Beachfront Bar and Grill, I took a short walk in the sand to rent a stand-up paddleboard from Super Dave himself. So how many devices did you start with? How many We had We had 23 when we started. We had 23 paddle craft and we have built it up to, we have about 120 paddle craft now. So did you start more with kayaks? Yeah, we had eight stand-up paddle boards, and now I have about 50. By having the pedal boats, kayaks for one or two people, so we can always accommodate to have everybody in a group. Nobody is left on the beach. It's just so much fun sending families out, you know. The kids just, you know, have a ball. But I'm gonna guess you have some people who've never been in a kayak or have never tried their balance on a stand-up paddle board. What are the reactions when people come back in? Oh, they absolutely love it. You know, we make sure that they're properly um, paddling whenever they send, when we send them out. You know, and the main thing is on the stand-up paddle board is you have to stand up straight. And you wanna keep the board moving because then the fin, it's like being on a bicycle. When you're moving, you don't have to put your feet down for balance. When you're just standing on the bicycle and, and come to a stop, you have to put your feet down or you'll fall over. So on the stand-up paddleboard, it's exactly, basically the same principle because the fin, when you're moving at a three or four mile an hour walking speed, the fin provides that balance because the water pressure over that fin in the moving water keeps you upright. Well, Super Dave, I'm up for a stand-up paddle board ride if you are up to, to take me out on the yeah, water. let's go. Good? Let's go. Uh-huh, yeah, it's a great day for paddling. If you're interested in getting in a round of golf during your visit to the Lake of the Ozarks, you'll have plenty of courses to choose from. In fact, you could make an entire trip out of it. We booked a tea time with the president of the Lake of the Ozarks Golf Council, Paul Leahy, to talk Ozark golfing and practice our short game. Uh, the golf scene here at the, at the Lake of the Ozarks is, is different than in a lot of the places in the country. Uh, we've got 12 public facilities. Uh, the terrain is, is kind of what makes all the courses unique. The elevation changes, the, uh, the water, the, uh, the uneven lies that you get out there, uh, the beauty of the trees and, and, and just the beauty of the whole Lake of the Ozarks in general uh, just make it a perfect place to come play golf. And we've got name designers here, uh, Robert Trent Jones, Tom Weisgolf, Arnold Palmer. You know, so they've got some challenging golf courses out there. We've also got some, so some relatively, uh, I want to say easier golf courses. They're not easy, but they're easier uh, for, for the average player. They're a little flatter. Uh, but so we've got a, got a wide variety of courses for everybody to play. Everybody has multiple sets of tee boxes, so it's, it's very friendly for, for everyone to play depending on your skill level. We have 13 courses in the area, uh, 12 are open to the public. Uh, there is one private facility, it's called Port of Chima, uh, it's a Jack Nicklaus design. Uh, the rest of them are on our golf trail, the other 12, and they, you know, they're all within about 45 minutes of each other, uh, so you can stay in one location and uh, get to all of them very easily. Uh, so it's, you know, tea times are readily available, so you know, we welcome everybody to come down and enjoy the beautiful, beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. If you're from out of the area and, and not, not have been to the Lake of the Ozarks before, you, you, probably, you might have seen the TV show, The Ozarks, but uh, it's, it's kind of nothing like that. But the, the terrain is very similar, but you're, you're going to come and you're going to see tree-lined fairways. You're going to see not a, lot of, not a lot of rough. It's going to be keeping the fairway the whole time and you won't see a lot of other people on the golf course with you. you know, a, lot, a lot of courses are very wide open and, and you, know, you can see other groups on the golf course. And you, you'll get out to our golf course and you'll, you'll see the group in front of you, you'll see the group behind you. Other than that, because the holes wind in and out of the, out of the Ozarks and you just don't see anybody else. So it's kind of like you're out there by yourselves in, in, in kind of a secluded area unless, unless you see, see the group you know, in front of you. It's the only people you're going to see all day. So, Besides the beverage cart, you'll see her too. High above the strip towers, the most colorful jungle gym I have ever seen. The ropes course at the Malted Monkey. A perfect place to hang out with friends and family over a carnival style meal and milkshake. Not to mention you can burn off the calories monkeying around afterward. Although the height looked intimidating, I just had to give it a shot. The ropes course, it has 30 different obstacles. They all vary on each level. There's three different levels. The tallest is 50 foot. Um, the second level, we have our zipline, 
Uh, that's probably one of the most popular things and also the 50 foot on the third floor. Uh, we actually hook you up with your harness and you just walk right off and it's a, it just drops you 50 foot. It is for all ages. Um, there's just a height limit. If you're not a certain height, you have to be with a parent. Other than that, it's any age, anybody can go up. So every day before we even open, all of our operators, we have to inspect everything from our harnesses to our zip lines, to even bolts, the ropes, um, everything that's on the course, we have to inspect everything. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, everything's properly working and everybody's safe. Some of the obstacles just vary. You could have a tightrope, you could have a bridge that you're gonna walk across. Um, you could have a balance beam, you could have a zigzag bars. Uh, there's so many different obstacles. Um, if you fall off, no matter what, you're still just gonna dangle there. You just have to pick yourself back up and get going again. The hardest feature would probably be the weighted log because it spins whenever you step on it and you have to walk across there without falling. Uh, you can actually just be up there as long as you want to until you come down. Most kids, they can vary up there between hour and a half to two hours. It just depends on your energy and every time you have. We also have a variety of food on our menu. We have burgers, we have chicken sandwiches, um, we have adult milkshakes, we have virgin milkshakes for kids. We also do host birthday parties and team building events. We actually do about eight different uh, events that they have to do on their course. And they basically get partners and they work together with that. So being on this trip, it draws in a lot of family and um, kids. Obviously there's a different variety of places to eat or even go to on this trip. So a lot of kids love when they walk by, especially at nighttime and they see our neon lights lit up. They're like, mom, dad, let's go there. I thought the ropes course at the Malted Monkey was high. That is until we got to our next destination. The best way to capture as much of the lake's beauty in the shortest amount of time is to take a helicopter tour from Lake Ozark Helicopters, Inc. Manager and pilot Dan Dornick welcomed us as we prepared for takeoff. Dan Dornick, you are one of the aviators of the Lake of the Ozarks. What does aerial tours mean to the Lake of the Ozarks? Well, we provide six different flights around the lake. Some of them are pretty quick. Some of them go all the way around the backside. We love what we do. We start in the spring. We go all the way to the fall colors and during the uh, major events here at the lake. Uh, we do fly high altitude. We do stay away from the water. It's safer up there. Uh, we do very calm flights. Uh, nothing scary up there. We just want everybody to see the beauty of the lake and how big it is and all the development. There's uh, construction everywhere, huge new homes, and so it's another reason why we like to stay up high to, uh, for noise. What is your favorite? So you said you have six tours. Are any of them where you're like, oh, I like that one? Yeah, I really like the state park tours. I like going over the state park, the high Tonka. Uh, I love flying the kids. The kids love it. We love taking pictures. Every once in a while, we'll sign a few hats for them and some of the older, ki uh, older uh, parents as well. We love to see people really enjoy themselves up there. So we're pointing out a lot of the big homes. There's a lot of new development. There's a lot of the state parks. There's a lot of history. A lot of people want to see the dam. They want to talk about the history of the lake. They want to talk about how the lake was developed. Since it was developed in the 20s and not in the 30s, it is a privately run lake. It's a privately run dam. That's very unique. There are very few reservoirs in this country that are all privately owned. Ameren owns this whole thing. And so we don't have the restrictions that come along with that, which you would have an Army Corps Lake. And that creates an incredible opportunity for the lake area. And so that's a lot of what we're talking about. What keeps you going? What keeps you wanting to get in that helicopter and going up into the sky? So I enjoy what I do. I love taking the kids up. I love the families that come in. It's the first time they ever get a flown. I didn't get to do that when I was younger. So the opportunity to have these kids come in, buy a t-shirt, put a headset on, meet some of the younger pilots, meet some of the guys with some experience. Some of them have been overseas. Some of them want their hats signed. I love doing that. I love sending these young people up. Some of them come back years later and say, I'm gonna join the military and I'm gonna fly. That's exciting for us. We love to do that. The excitement out here and they come back year after year. Uh, that's what I love about doing this. Do you think of yourself as a person who makes dreams come true? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes we definitely are, absolutely, especially on a beautiful day. We definitely uh, are the highlight of, of some kids' trips. This is what they love to do. Thanks for chatting with me, but I think we need to get up in the air. Sounds good. Let's go do it. Go it's flight? beautiful tonight. Let's do it. Yeah. As you can tell, the Lake of the Ozarks didn't disappoint. 
But even if riding in a race car or flying in a helicopter or walking the tight ropes high above the strip aren't on your list, you will find plenty to occupy your time. In fact, you'll probably have to come back time and time again to take in all the flavors, the sights, and the people of the Lake of the Ozarks. The Lake of the Ozarks is a destination teeming with delicious food, friendly faces, scenic natural beauty, and activities for people of all ages and abilities. And the lake has tons of lodging options from luxury and family-owned resorts, charming bed and breakfast, cabins, cottages, and even campgrounds. Here at Missouri Life, we encourage you to explore our beautiful state and experience all it has to offer. On behalf of Missouri Life Magazine and myself, Thanks for watching and tune in next time to spark your spirit of discovery and experience Missouri Life. Missouri Life Magazine explores and celebrates the people, places, history, and destinations that make our state unique. Subscriptions to Missouri Life Magazine are available at MissouriLife.com. For exclusive content, full episodes, and much, much more, Subscribe to the Missouri Life channel on YouTube and enjoy the journey at your own pace. Like it's like exhilarating when you first do it. Like you're like, yes! And then after a while you're like, okay, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Ready? For a second trip. <laughs> <laughs>